Welcome everyone, welcome to the colloquium one year after Fukushima, the CDBTO's contribution to mitigating natural and nuclear disasters. I especially would like to welcome our guests, Ambassador Toshiro Osawa, Deputy Director General Denis Fleury, Dr. Wendy Watson-Wright and Dr. Maria Neira, who, are, uh, who we have with us uh, on uh, video link, Professor Wolfgang Weiss and Dr. Michael Staudinger. The March 11 triple disaster in Japan caused immeasurable loss of life and suffering. We would like to pay our respects to the victims of these tragic events. Consequences would have been even worse had disasters struck a less developed and organized nation than Japan. With today's colloquium, we would like to discuss how the CTBTO can make its contribution to help states mitigate such disasters and to potentially save lives. This event is part of the Tim Hampton Lecture Series in commemoration of one of our most beloved and dedicated staff members. This is a series of international lectures concerning various technical topics related to the CTBTO. Why name this lecture series after Tim Hampton? Let me say that Tim was always willing to enthusiastically share all the knowledge he had with anyone and everyone. We hope that these lectures will be a clear demonstration of the enthusiasm, joy, and inclusiveness which, which Tim showed us every day. This colloquium is structured in two sessions. The first will give an introduction and the perspectives of the CTBTO's partner organizations with whom we shared our data during the crisis last year. In the second session, the CTBTO's experts will elaborate on the CTBTO's technical response for each of the four verification technologies. At the end of each session, there will be ample time for questions and answers, and there will be a coffee break around 11.20. I will first give the floor to Dr. Lassina Serbo, who needs no introduction. Um, but uh, I will nevertheless say that uh, he is uh, our director of, uh, um, he's the director of the International Data Center here at the CTBTO. He is, uh, Dr. Zarbo is from Burkina Faso. He's a geophysicist and uh, uh, worked in management positions for a number of multinational companies in France, Canada, and the United States before joining the CTBTO in 2004. Dr. Zarbo, you have the floor, please. Thank you, Anika. Uh, morning, good morning, distinguished uh, uh, delegate and uh, colleague from the PTS. Um, <clears throat> CTBT past and future contribution to emergency preparedness uh, and then the Fukushima case study. So it's been a year, as mentioned by Anika, since Japan suffered the disastrous event that began with uh, a huge magnitude 9 Tohoku earthquake. The earthquake triggered a massively destructive uh, tsunami that eventually led to radionuclear release from Fukushima power plant. Perhaps, and said because these disasters had such an, an enormous human impact, it is appropriate that we reflect on the roles that the CTBT plays in contributing to emergency preparedness on this anniversary. As part of our Tim Hampton lecture series, this colloquium, I mean uh, the CTBT contribution, will address the capability of the international monitoring system to provide early warning of impending disasters, to monitor the spread of radioactive particulate and gases, and to contribute to the understanding of such disastrous events through scientific knowledge. Of course, using this knowledge is just as important as having it. So one of the most important aspects of, of the discussion today will be the coordination of effort by the many UN organizations, as mentioned already by Anika, whose individual expertise was needed to piece together a coordinated and coherent UN response. It is my pleasure to share the podium with Ambassador Toshiro Ozawa, 
Permanent Representative of Japan to the International Organization in Vienna, Deputy Director General Denny Flory of the International uh, Atomic Energy Agency, Wolfgang Weiss, Chair of the United Nations Scientific Committee on the Effect of Atomic Radiation, and the Director General of uh, the Meteorological and Geodynamic of Austria, Mr. Michael Staubding, uh, who is also the permanent representative of Austria to the WMO, the World Meteorological or Organization. Uh, also, I would like, and uh, you probably see it on the screen, to mention Dr. Wendy Watson Wright, the Executive Secretary of the International Oceanographic Commission, UNESCO IOC, and uh, Dr. Maria Nera, Director of the Public Health and Environment of the World Health Organization, uh, who are following this presentation over video streaming. And uh, uh, let's uh, thank them for their availability and contribution to come. The Fukushima event was teaching us how important it is to cooperate and share the information with other organizations and state parties. The cooperation we had with the IEA, WHO, and WMO was important as we were considering the amount of the release, and there was an imminent need to understand the magnitude of the accident, as it was potentially hazardous for people. Anscare is also currently making in-depth analysis of the nature of the release based also on CTBT radionuclide detection during the accident. I hope that you find this colloquium informative and that it stimulates conversation and action that lead to the reduction of the human suffering by such disasters. It is now my great pleasure to turn the floor over to Ambassador Toshiro Ozawa, Permanent Representative of Japan to the International Organization. Thank you. Thank you, Dr.